Hey, what's going on, Twitch? Jay the Flash here. It is Super Tuesday, as we're going to start calling it. Let's get this up. Anyway, Super Tuesday, as we're calling it, um, where we're going to chat Marvel, DC, um, possibly some anime as well down the road, kind of depending on what's going on. Today, after this weekend, we're going to talk Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, so if you have not seen that yet, spoiler warnings are coming. Um, obviously, I'm going to start off with just the plot and kind of overall review of it, and then we'll get into some detail. That's where the spoilers will come in. Um... So yeah, it, we'll start off by just saying it was amazing. Um, obviously, this is the third installment of the uh, Guardians lineup. Um, really great. Um, definitely, I mean, we, we, we kind of run out of trilogies to compare it to. If you want to compare it to the three Avengers movies... It stacks up pretty well. The three, now I guess technically four Thor movies, it stacks up very well. Um, the three Spider-Man movies stacks up very well. One of the better trilogies uh, from start to finish now. Um, so overall, movie starts off in a great spot. Um, we're, we're at nowhere. We're kind of seeing the Guardians after Endgame and after the holiday special, which was kind of, kind of a cool little deal in the middle there to show us that they've taken over nowhere and they're turning it into their new headquarters um, so we start off there we get to learn about rocket and his background I, and I feel like each movie's done that pretty well um, you know obviously we first learn about quill star lord in the first one and kind of where his why he is who he is and we get a little bit more into Gamora and two and more quill as well we learn more about his father and two obviously but then three is really about the backstory of Rocket Raccoon and why he is who he is, um, and it's, it it ties in so well with the other two movies as you watch it through. Some of the lines in one or two are gonna hit different um, after you've seen three. Great visuals, um, James Gunn again, just delivering us another superhero masterpiece. He obviously knows what he's doing with these superhero movies and transitioning some of the comic book stuff in, adding new things. Obviously, we're not going to get as accurate to a T as you can. You can't do that, and I don't think we should expect that anymore. I think a lot of the times everybody wants this to be as accurate to the comics as possible, but you really can't do that in this Marvel universe. So, great overall. Um, the soundtrack to this one, not as good as I think the first two. Um... Obviously, you know, the first one's very iconic with all those great early and late 70s music um, hits. And then the second one, we get to go into the 80s a little bit more. This one did have a lot of 90s and early 2000s music. It just, it didn't have some of the big ones. And I don't know, maybe that's budget issues or some of the 90s and 2000s songs just aren't, you know, maybe as affordable as the 80s and 70s are now. But still really good, good stuff. Um, let me see if I can. <clears throat> um, do get a Beastie Boys track in there that was it hit at the right time. Um, overall plot line, the new villain, the High Evolutionary, a great villain. Um, I compare him for me is in a villain of Game of Thrones to a uh, Ramsey Bolton, Ramsey Snow character. Like, oh, just evil to the core and you want him dead. Like, it, And he they played it so well. We get introduced to Adam Warlock. Um, amazing job, I think. I think a lot of people might not like it, um, but you have to also understand it a little bit more. Let's get this down just. Um, you're going to have to understand it a little bit. Really great, though. What I, I think the direction they took with it and the actor just ran with it and nailed it. Um, Drax's character, it, so much development for Drax in this third movie. Loved it. Mantis gets more in depth. Um, we get more stuff from Groot. Um, Swole Groot in this one. Uh, very. I like the aesthetic look of Swole Groot. Um, actually, kind of looked a little bit more like Vin Diesel, which is kind of funny. Um, we get Gamora back in. More arcing for Gamora. Um, great tie-ins to Endgame, obviously. 
uh, it was just overall great. So, um, starts off, like we said, in nowhere, uh, Quill's down, and I, I think they they really portray him missing Gamora, and, I mean, he's just drunk all the time, it sounds like, and the Guardians are constantly picking him up and putting him away, and Adam Warlock shows up. Now, Adam Warlock, in this movie... They basically, what happened was, is the High Evolutionary is after Rocket. He needs Rocket. So, he goes to the Sovereign, which is one of the species the High Evolutionary actually created, we learned. Great stuff. Um, and so, he sends Adam Warlock to get Rocket. Now, the High Evolutionary, his character is trying to take species of lower life forms and advance them. He wants the perfect society. That's what he's trying to build. That's what he's going for. And so his character is very much driven by that, and he doesn't care the cost as he drives these up. And we learn that as we explore how Rocket was created and stuff like that. So anyways, he sends off Adam Warlock, and what we learn is the High Evolutionary went and got him out of his pod too soon, so his brain isn't fully developed. It's still very much childish, uh, innocent, and it oh, plays off so well, but you get to see how strong this character really is. Because in the comics, Adam Warlock is very much... A very super strong character on the level of Thanos. I mean, in fact, him and Thanos have confrontations, talks. They they respect each other on a level, which is crazy to say about Thanos. So, but they played that so well. Um, so they escape Adam Warlock the first time, and he's he's hurt Rocket, and so they went to go try to save Rocket with a med pack, and apparently there's a kill switch on his heart that was put there by the High Evolutionary. So, if you try to open or, like, the, any body work that goes into Rocket, it will kill him. So, now they got to try to find this key code to unlock the kill switch so Rocket doesn't die and they can save him. And that's where we learn they actually need to go find the High Evolutionary because he's the only one that has it. We, we get to go to one of the uh, planets of his that is all bio-organic, bio is what we'll call it, bio-organic life forms growing and it creates this planet that's where all his technology is and stuff like that and so they go there to try to get it uh, great cameo by Nathan Fillion in there as one of the guardsmen played it off so well um, and then we advance after they they get there they find out that the data that they needed has been downloaded to one of the high evolutionary's henchmen's brain so now they got they really need to go find the high evolutionary like they need to go directly to him Turns out he's making a counter Earth. So he visited Earth years ago, loved the culture and stuff like that, but saw how humans, he didn't like the way humans behaved. He thinks they were unevolved, that they were always going to be clashing, war, as we all know has happened. Um, so his, his goal was to take lower life forms from Earth and create them into these super beings. That's where Rocket came in and stuff like that. So he has different phases. And the phase where he is at with Rocket is by basically just taking these animals and um, putting gadgets and gizmos and all this other stuff into them. Um, you, they basically mutilate Rocket as we, we all know. We've seen Rocket's body and what's on him, the skeletal structure. But we learn about his friend Lila who's an otter basically missing her arms replaced with metal arms. There's a Wallace in there that he ends up calling himself Teeth's. Um, he's got, um, like, like it looks like a wheelchair attached to him so he can roll. And then there was this bunny that was completely just decimated, like a trap jaw on their spider legs that are me me metal. Um, so the high evolutionary, that was one of his phases. And Rocket finally gets like this, something happens in Rocket's brain where it, it makes him so advanced and so smart. Like, he figures out things quicker than any other. So, they're studying Rocket and they're learning. Well, once they've learned some things, they try to incorporate from Rocket what they did into a new evolutionary line where basically the animal becomes a human morph of that animal. Problem is, when it becomes that, the brain still isn't functioning properly. There's something wrong in the, in the feeding of the process where they be become violent creatures. And Rocket, they bring in Rocket, actually, as a baby Rocket. It's very sad. And he discover he figures it out. He's like, oh, this line's crossed, this line's crossed, whatever. So High Evolutionary fixes it. And once he fixes it, he's like, oh, now I can go to my new Earth. 
Well, Rocket and Lila and the others thought they were going to this new Earth as well. Like, they were going to be able to live there, see the skies, not be trapped in cages. And that wasn't the case. Obviously, the High Evolutionary, once he figured this set out, this species out, he's going to terminate the rest of Rocket's line and stuff like that. So he's going to kill them all. Rocket's obviously <laughs> panics, creates an escape route, tries to escape the High Evolutionary. They catch him. As they're catching Rocket, they kill his friends. Rocket goes nuts, claws the High Evolutionary's face completely off, and escapes. So now we're going back to present time where they're going to Counter-Earth, and they land on Counter-Earth, and you get to see the evolution that he set there. Anyways, <clears throat> um, so they get to see what happened, and like we basically see these animals that were turned into human morphs, human norphs, or whatever we want to call them, and they, they basically lived the same society we lived in. And there's still the same problem of you're, they're driving down the street and they see drug deals going on. They see violence happening. So he still didn't fix the problem. <laughs> Give me just a second. Okay. <clears throat> so they, they, they still are growing like we would have here on Earth. So the High Evolutionary is trying to actually... The reason he wants Rocket is he still thinks there's something in Rocket's brain... That would prevent this from happening. So he wants him. And once he gets Rocket, he's going to destroy this planet. Um, Quill and uh, Nebula, they get aboard. Well, Quill gets aboard with Groot. Uh, they keep Nebula outside. Drogon, stop! Um, and so they get on board. And uh, they try to fight the High Evolutionary. He takes off, destroys the planet. Um, in process, Adam Warlock had chased him down to this planet. And uh, he was there with his mom from the Sovereign. And she ends up blowing up in the explosion. So now Adam Warlock kind of has a purpose too. That he doesn't know he's going to go after High Evolutionary just yet. He's still so much focused on the Guardians and trying to fight them. But So he escapes the planet. Sorry, I got some outside neighbor's noise going on. Anyways, so they escape the planet. Um, Quill and Groot end up f jumping off of the High Evolutionary ship as Drax and Mantis and Nebula get back on it to go save them. So now they have to go back, but he, he got the pass key. He gets there, he gets Rocket, saves Rocket. There's a beautiful moment where we think Rocket's dying, um, but it's just long enough for him to see his friends his old friends from before and they tell him his time's not yet he needs to go back and help the guardians so he ends up being saved they go and save him um we have another scene where uh at the end there they finally fight the high evolutionary they get rid of him and peter's out in space he couldn't make the jump they had to basically on his ship he had a bunch of the new uh species he wanted to raise and he was willing to let them die to get to Rocket. He was, you know, the ship's exploding, things are happening. So they bring Nowhere. They, I mean, they space jump Nowhere. It's crazy. Like, they turn Nowhere into this flying fortress of a ship. And they show up and help. And Anyway, so they dock Nowhere to the High Evolutionary ship. And they're trying to get all these new species, these new, this new humanity across. Because they're all young, very young children. Rocket finds all the cages where he used to be and he finds the baby raccoons and he finds all these other animals and he wants to save them so they're all trying to save them as they're coming um cosmo who plays a really big role in this that's when i forgot cosmo the dog as we seen in uh, guardians one at the uh uh collector's uh collection and then we see him a little bit in guardians two at the end but he becomes a big part of this and he's a big him and Craglin are kind of back and forth, and it's great. You need, really need to go see that part. I don't want to spoil too much. I'm going to try to keep this as spoiler-free as I possibly can. But Cosmo's got telepathy, and he's holding the two together. That's the only way they can make the seal. Well, he's starting to finally fade, fade, and it fades, and it breaks apart, and Peter's able to... He was going to go back to get the music track because Rocket had been listening to the 
music this whole time, this whole episode, this whole movie. Like, Rocket wanted to listen to the music. And so Peter went back to get it for him because he dropped it. As he does, the ships separate. He can't make. He tries to make the jump. He misses. So he's floating out in space, very much similar to how he saves Gamora in one. Um, and we kind of find out his body can handle it a little better because he's a half celestial. Um, so, anyways, he's out there, and it looks like he's about to die. Adam Warlock's redemption because um, he was on the ship. Groot saved him. So he and they asked why. What, bud? Yeah. So, um, Groot tell he asked why Groot saved him, and Groot said, and he says, "I am Groot, obviously." But Rocket translates, saying, "Everyone deserves a second chance." And this is where Adam Warlock comes out. He saves Quill. We don't get any deaths like we kind of anticipated. Um, and I'll touch on that here in just a little bit. So after that, kind of get the big happy hooray ending. Everybody saved. And then we come to realize that some of the Guardians are getting ready to leave. Um, one of the storylines going through is that Mantis wanted Quill to go back to Earth and find his grandpa. Um, you know, because he's lost everybody. Mom, his dad, he had to kill his own dad even though, you know, that might not have been as sad for him, but still it's pretty sad. He's lost Gamora, basically. So on and so forth. So, she wants him to go back and find his dad, or his grandpa, and reconnect with his grandpa. Quill fights it the whole time, but after this whole thing with Rocket and understanding, and just, they finally, it, it shows Quill's growth so much, and he realizes that, you know, this new Gamora that came from back in time that's now living in the present, you know, because she was the only one that stayed, technically, we've learned, too. He kind of says a line where, why were you the only one that could come back from that time and stay and stuff like that? Why is it, you know, why is it allowed? And hopefully, maybe that's touched on in Loki. Because we do learn f through the TVA and stuff that some timelines are allowed to stay intact for certain reasons. So I'm hoping that's brought up. But anyway, so Quill decides he needs to go back and see his grandpa. So he's leaving. He tells the Guardians, hey, I'm going to go back. It's like, I'm done for a while. I'm just taking a break. I'm not leaving you guys forever. I just need a break. And he, you know, basically telling Rocket, you're the new captain now. And then Mantis says she needs to kind of go find herself because she went from Ego to the Guardians. You know, and she doesn't know what she wants. Um, she's always just kind of done what everybody else wants. So she's going to go find herself. So Mantis is leaving. And then Drax kind of wants to leave too. But Nebula convinces him to stay on nowhere with her to help build this new society. Now they have all these new species from the high evolutionary ship. They're trying to raise on nowhere and stuff like that. And Drax really shows us his line through this whole thing. is showing us how much of a great dad he could have been. You know, obviously he lost his little girl in what we learn he loses her you know prior to events of one and so that's where we kind of get with that and we learn you know he he helped the little kids on the high evolutionary ship he could understand their language he got them off the ship so he's going to be there to be a dad and he even does a little he starts dancing at the end of the you know movie which we learned that drax was never a dancer but he's they've that's how much the guardians have changed him that now he's a dancer and uh it's great storyline there so Drax and Nebula are going to end up staying on nowhere so the new we now have a new Guardians lineup and it's going to be Rocket, Cosmo, uh, Groot which we get to see King Groot which is awesome um, he looks just ridiculously monstrous I love it um, Kraglin and Adam Warlock and there's a and then there's one they do take one of the high evolutionaries uh, new species his new one of the kids, and she's part of um, the Guardians now as well. Um, but we get a great scene at the end with the new Guardians and them asking what their favorite song is or artist is, and it's just great stuff. Uh, Craglin says Garth Brooks, which I think is hilarious. Of course, Craglin would love Garth Brooks. Um, we get just a bunch. We get a throwback call to the first Guardians um, with Rocket song choice. Just great great stuff um the new species kid she says she loves britney spears which just totally makes sense because they're probably listening to all the 2000s stuff as they're growing up so overall it was a really great movie um i think what we what they did with this one is they showed you that character arc is more important than storyline and i like that a lot because we we do get sometimes where i think storyline favors over character arc so some of your characters don't go on that trajectory you thought they were going to um, 
we did have the we did have two post credit scenes. So if you haven't seen yet, there is two um, to go watch. Um, and it, at the end of the one, it does say, "Come here." Um, the end, it does say, "Star Lord will return," which was a little weird because I thought there was something saying that Chris Pratt was done playing Star Lord, but it could have just been because I. This is officially, I think, James Gunn's last Marvel for now. Obviously, there was that big hoopla with Disney firing and bringing it back, blah, blah, blah. He's going to do a lot of the DC movie stuff now, so we'll see how that turns out for DC. I think James Gunn is amazing. I've seen what he's done with uh, Peacekeeper, and it's or Peacemaker, sorry, and it's really good. And so I think it's going to be even better. For DC, but I, I hope that somewhere down the road, Marvel and Disney bring back James Gunn, because I think it would be great. Now, are we going to see this new Guardians down in Avengers with the King Dynasty or Secret Wars? Time will tell. Maybe that's how Star-Lord comes back. I could see an alternate universe Star-Lord and stuff like that. So, Because um, they didn't necessarily say Peter Quill, they just said Star-Lord. So we could have that what-if scenario of when Black Panther, but I don't think I don't think you're ever gonna see a Black Panther variant anymore. I think they they want to pay respect to Chadwick Boseman and what he did. So I don't know if we're gonna get that down the line either. But they're definitely gonna be in the next Avengers. Makes the most sense. Um, I definitely was a little bit more scared of the High Evolutionary than I was Kang. But that's because I know there's variations of Kang that are good. Um, there was no variation of this High Evolutionary that was gonna be good. So um, definitely. Maybe killed him off a little too well, and they didn't really show him dying. Rocket didn't kill him when Rocket had the chance. That was one I think a great character arc for Rocket is he literally could have killed him. And he said no, I'm better than him, so he doesn't kill him. So he could have survived the spaceship blast. I don't know. So maybe we see him down the road. Could be the whole you know Red Skull thing. He comes back in a different role. Who knows? I mean the only villain that's technically still going is Loki, but Loki's not really a villain anymore. So we, we definitely need that baddie that's going to carry through, and it's supposed to be King, but now with the new stuff coming out against Jonathan, I don't know. Um, hopefully none of it's true, um, so we can keep our King, because I think he did a really good job as King. Um, but a perfect bow to tie up this lineup of the Guardians. One, two, and three, really great. I think you do rank it as such. I think one was very good. Two was the best, great, solid. Three was very good. Good way to end cap. I don't think they needed to make three better than two. Um, you don't always need that. It's very much like the Star Wars trick, right? Where New Hope was revolutionary and sparked something. Empire Strike Back was the best. And then Return of the Jedi was exactly what you needed it to be. So... I think that's exactly what this trilogy was. Was one was revolutionary. Um, one was revolutionary. Two was perfect in every way. And then three was exactly what you needed it to be. So overall great stuff. I'm hoping, you know, this new lineup, they get to be featured. So I think it's a great lineup. I think it's a funny lineup. I think it'd be a lot of laughs. Um... This one definitely pulls on the heartstrings a lot. Um, my wife went to see it with me along with our two best friends, Colin and Emily. A lot of tears all around, very much. And like I said, I th the rumors were going around there was going to be a huge death of some sort, right? A lot of people were speculating because a lot of the characters were saying, hey, I'm done with this character. Dave Batista has come out and said he doesn't want to play Drax anymore. There was a scene where... I basically thought Drax was dead. I was like, oh man, we're going to start off right here. Uh, they start off very early with Rocket. I think we kind of knew they were going to save him for a lot of the movie. And then towards the end there, he's about dead again. Um, Quill almost dying. Nebula a few times, but not as heavily hinted at. Groot was never really hinted at dying either, which I thought was good. But... Um, yeah, they definitely teased us with a lot of, oh, this could have been the big time death and then they didn't do it, which I actually think was pretty brilliant by James because again, when a crowd, when somebody expects something so heavily, 
you can deliver on it, but you have to deliver on it perfect. And if you don't, then you're going to, you know, just have utter disappointment. And then if you nail it, great, everybody's happy, but it's not really going to exceed expectations. So I think him going the opposite way with it was very much a genius move because it was brilliant. Um, it, it got you where you needed, like, oh, crap, my favorite character is going to be gone. He's there, but he's he's changed, and he's different. And, you know, like we said, Star-Lord's moving on. He's back on Earth, but I think could lead to some hijinks, possibly, if Chris Pratt's coming back. Obviously, he's on Earth. Dark Strange is on Earth. Spider-Man's on Earth. <sighs> well, we got... I mean, we have the new Captain America is coming out soon. The Marvels, um, there was a trailer for the Marvels. We'll see if they tie anything from this to it. There's definitely going to be a lot of space stuff. We are going back to the Kree um, in battle, so we have a new, basically new Ronin of the Kree in the new bad guy. So, Sorry, I'm kind of watching one as we talk here, too. Just kind of go back over in my head some of the stuff. But, yeah. Great, great, great movie. I don't think there could have been anything else done to it. I didn't, for in my personal opinion, there could have been others. I do see a lot of people out there trying to bash on it already, like saying it's a flop. It made more opening weekend than Guardians One. Um, it made more than recent Marvel movies. Uh, it's made back its budget and then some. So and that's just opening weekend. So you still got a few weeks before it, you know, gets its total. Um, it's definitely a, a rewatchable one. You would want to go back and watch in the movie theaters again. Um, m I guess the biggest downfall for me was maybe soundtrack. Um, some of the songs were very iconic 90 songs. Some of the others I had to listen to a little bit more as they played to remember what they were actually. Um, but still great stuff. Definitely something I think every Marvel fan should go see if you haven't already. I know a lot of you probably already have. I mean, ever since the start, they started building the cinematic universe. Basically, for me, since Iron Man 2, I haven't missed an opening weekend on a Marvel movie um, since then. So, I always try to go premiere night. As you get older and you start getting work stuff and having a kid, Thursday nights just don't work anymore. So, we start going Fridays and Saturdays. But I still have not missed an opening weekend. And I think there was a lot, there's a lot of disappointment in Phase 4. Phase 4 was definitely a little lackluster, but you got to remember, so was Phase 1. Phase 1 was a lot of setup to the new line that we're going through. They started building this universe up, right? Well, after Endgame, we kind of have to reset. We have to rebuild another universe to get to. And I think that's what Phase 4 was. So I think a lot of people were very disappointed with Phase 4. And this is the kickoff of Phase 5. And I think it nailed it. I think it was a great kickoff to Phase 5. Um, we got, Like I said, Marvels is going to be part of that. We're going to have Loki Season 2, which I think is going to be one of the key things. And the fact that that's on Disney Plus is going to be huge. We got Secret Invasion. Um, I'll try to think of the next one after Secret Invasion. We definitely are getting Fantastic Four down the road. Which, I, I haven't looked at any of the casting things and rumors. I heard somewhere that Adam Driver was play, play, close playing this fantastic. I want to verify that first. I think that's the wrong choice. I think John Krasinski should be Mr. Fantastic. I get it. We They kind of had the thing with him and Doctor Strange and he died instantly, whatever. I, I hated that whole part of um, Multiverse of Madness. It was one of my least favorite scenes of Multiverse of Madness. But it's definitely... I, I want to leave this up to you know, something that's going to be good. So, going forward on Tuesdays, we're going to be here. We can alternate between Marvel, DC, anime. I can kind of talk a little bit of everything. I definitely am going to be talking about The Flash here coming up soon. Both the CW series and the movie that's coming out, I'll definitely be going to see in that. Um, the CW series is about to wrap up. It's got three episodes left. Um, this last episode I just watched was amazing. Um takes you back all the way to season one is crazy and just hits you where where season one two and three was um but yeah so I'll, I'll upload this later i don't think we're gonna have a lot of chat because there's not really anybody here so i'll upload this later to youtube so y'all can kind of see it review it yourselves give me your comments and thoughts there 
and hopefully going in the future we start getting more people in here because I would like to have like a back and forth chat. I don't want it to just be me talking. I want you guys to ask questions, give your opinions, what you're saying. Um, hopefully it's coming across clear. I don't know if I have anybody in to kind of listen to me and tell me if it is coming across clear or not. And maybe this was all just a bad idea. Probably can't even hear me this whole time. Anyways, so yes, great movie overall. I'd say as far as Marvel rankings go, it cracks my top 15, not my top 10. Um, my top 10 though is very, I am very picky on my top 10 and there's reasons for my top 10 and maybe that's something on a future show I'll go over. Um, cause I definitely think I could write that down how I ranked every Marvel movie and that could be a big topic of discussion. Um, but it definitely is in my top 15. Uh, I think that anything that goes after this one is going to have to be up to those expectations. Otherwise they're going to have a dip again and I think they're going to lose some interest what they've been doing over the past 15 years is crazy and I, I think it's unheard of you don't see it and you haven't seen it anywhere else it's something new and I really believe that they can do better they obviously can hardest part's going to be you know keeping some of these actors on board as things get more popular they want more money totally understandable I know you know that's probably one of the main reasons you know, they had to get rid of Iron Man and stuff. I mean, the Iron Man's death in Endgame actually I think was a very much needed death anyways. S really sets up the importance of sacrifices that they're willing to make. And it kind of sparks, I think, a new generation of heroes as well. But we got so much to look forward to. Um, hopefully we see some continuations on the Eternals again. Um, Moon Knight. If you guys haven't watched Werewolf by Night, oh so good you need to go back and see that that's another topic I definitely will be talking about probably next month is the werewolf by night special thought it was great I love the black and white shooting and stuff like that um, just a heads up for anybody thinking about it for their kids there is a few heavily used swear words and an f-bomb dropped so just remind I'll re remind anybody of that just in case you know don't want your kids to hear that totally understand it I have a two-year-old, so he doesn't really understand it yet. He's very good at repeating it, but he doesn't understand it yet. Um, but yeah, so I think that's been about a half hour of me chatting you guys up. Um, and no chat back, so we'll definitely wrap this up tonight. And hopefully going forward, um, go check out my Twitch schedule. Um, I have everything set up, kind of how I'm going to do things. Monday nights will be Call of Duty nights. Tuesday is going to be this. Um, Wednesdays I'm going to be doing a double stream I'm going to be streaming during the day Call of Duty and then at night is going to be my turtle slash action figure talk um, Thursdays is going to be kind of my night off day off slash getting videos edited hopefully uploaded to TikTok and YouTube and stuff like that um, and then Friday nights back to Call of Duty and then Saturday night is going to be our wrestling chat I'm super excited about that and, ho and some hopefully some future um, pay-per-view watch-alongs. I was going to do the first one this Saturday. Um, we had family in town for my son's birthday, so I wasn't able to do that. But this Saturday will be the first chat. I know we got uh, AEW All or Nothing. No, not All or Nothing. All Out? No. Double or Nothing coming up soon. And then we have Night of Champions as well. So we'll have, I think, two weekends of back-to-back watch-alongs, which I think will be great. Uh, and I definitely know some people are going to tune into that um, once I tell them that I'm doing that. Um, anyways, thanks for tuning in if you did. If you see this later on YouTube, definitely hit the thumbs up. Give a subscribe. Uh, go back and watch it here on Twitch. Give me a follow. Definitely try to build that up. And I will definitely see you guys tomorrow at noon for some Call of Duty. We have Warzone Ranked Play coming out tomorrow. We're going to kick off with that and see how long we can stay in that. Might switch back to regular rank play after, um, and then tomorrow night for Turtle Talk. So I haven't got a topic of discussion yet for Turtle Talk. I'm going to post that to my Instagram uh, tonight for people to give me some suggestions for, and hopefully get that ready and set for tomorrow. So I will see you guys then.